The House Speaker had strong words from the President and the Senate leader concerning the border. Record numbers now have record numbers now have record numbers in Texas and Arizona, 12,000 in one day. Letter writing mm -hmm. and press conferences are not working for the Republicans. Is there anything that can be done other than wait 11 months for another election? Uh, sadly, there is nothing that can be done. There's not going to be a policy change. And uh, again, I don't understand why Republicans would not impeach Joe Biden on his uh, complete violation of Article 4, Section 4 of the United States Constitution, the Guarantee Clause, where the federal government is supposed to guarantee every state uh, from being invaded. And that's very clear language. And how funny it is when you listen to Corrine Jean-Pierre, the White House spokesperson, that stands up there in that podium and says that Joe Biden has done everything possible to secure the border, when he's done everything to undermine the border. If you want to talk about undermining our democracy, think about what Kathy Hochul just announced uh, earlier this week, and that she wants to see illegals vote in the state of uh, New York. And we know that they have tried to do that in many different uh, localities all across the United States of America. Okay, let's follow up on the border. The CDC does not require immigrants to have vaccinations. Increasing cases of tuberculosis, now a spike in congenital syphilis nationwide, mm -hmm. highest level in the last 30 years. So where's our Surgeon General calling for the border to close? Well, the Surgeon General is not going to say anything because he's part of the Biden administration. So not only do you have a uh, drug trafficking crisis with the fentanyl that's killing Americans, you have a human and sex trafficking crisis, now you have a health care crisis. And oh, by the way, if you read some recent reports in Arizona, there's a special line for illegal immigrants. They don't even have to show any identification to board airplanes. They are just uh, passed right through TSA. Well, you and I, as legal law-abiding citizens, have to do the exact same thing. So I think it's very, you know, you know, insidious, and it's a slap in the face of Americans that get told that we have to get vaccines and we have to have our children vaccinated and all these things. But yet we're allowing people into this country illegally that do not have to abide by what we're supposed to abide by being, showing ID to get on airplanes, get through airports, going through security, or even getting shots. Finally, in this segment, Harvard motto is veritas, means truth. You have followed mm -hmm. the revelation of plagiarism by the Harvard president. Now donors are withholding money. Now the New York Times is reporting on this. Will Harvard follow their motto or continue to redefine what plagiarism is? Well, well, right now it seems that they're going to redefine what plagiarism is, but I think that the increased pressure will bring about their uh, board of trustees to release Claudine Gay. Maybe they'll just put her somewhere else in the, uh, the university, but she cannot go on as the president. Colonel West, thank you so much for your insight. Back to you in just a moment. Mike, one man's mission to bring God back to public schools is more than just a pipe dream. What very few people realize is that in 1952, the Supreme Court actually ruled that public school students can be released from school during school hours to receive religious instruction if the program is off school property, privately funded, and students have parental permission. Joel Penton founded LifeWise Academy beginning with two schools in 2019. Since then, its reach has grown to 340 schools in 15 states. This has been kind of under the radar for 70 years. A few years ago, uh, we were learned about this and started a, a program, LifeWise Academy, a model that any community across the country could implement. The overwhelming response to LifeWise has put the Academy in the crosshairs of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, an atheist activist group. FFRF began resisting the spread, especially in Ohio. They sent a letter out to um, every single superintendent in the state of Ohio, be in part because LifeWise is spreading so rapidly in Ohio. And the next year, we will be in a full quarter of the 600 uh, school districts in the state of Ohio. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost responded by notifying school superintendents that they're legally permitted to participate in LifeWise and other programs like it. To find out more, go to LifeWise.org. Greg? For many, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without attending or watching a performance of Handel's Messiah. In 1741, German composer George Frederick Handel composed the work in 24 days, and many believe it was divinely inspired. Reportedly, Charles Jens uh, handpicked Old and New Testament scriptures referring to Jesus and gave it to Handel, telling a friend, We find uh, Jennings writing to another friend of his, uh, saying, 
Uh, I've done this scripture collection for Handel, and I hope he will expend his best efforts on it so that it becomes his best oratorio, because it's certainly on the best subject. The subject is Messiah. A friend reportedly visited Handel while writing, and to find him sobbing, he is recorded as saying he saw all of heaven and the great God before him as he wrote the Hallelujah Chorus. For Jennings the hand and Handel, the work was an evangelistic tool to reach the masses. They used controversial methods of performing Messiah in theaters rather than churches to include a wider audience. He touches people on every possible level, whether it be on a spiritual level or, or musical level or dramatic level. There's something in Messiah for everybody. The composition is considered one of the greatest works of all time, but Handel didn't want the credit. At the end of his manuscript, Handel wrote the letters SDG, Sole Deo Gloria, to God alone the glory. Before we go, let's talk with Victory News contributor Lieutenant Colonel Alan West one last time. Today, Colonel, mm -hmm. there's a lot of troubling things facing us on all fronts as Americans this Christmas. Yet this one man, as Tim reported, Joel Penton, founded LifeWise Academy beginning with two schools in 2019. It's grown to 340 schools in 15 states. To me, this shows the power of one person with a dream. What would you say to those watching today that have a dream to make America better? Well, I would say whenever you give God the glory, as you just said, to God be the glory, uh, it's going to be fruitful, it's going to expand, it's going to grow. And I think that without a doubt, when you think of Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name, uh, th we can heal this land. But we just have to admit our sins and we have to focus on him and we have to pray earnestly to the Lord. And I think that you will see a difference. And everyday people are going to make the difference in, the, in this country. And Christmas is about unto us a child is born. That one person, Jesus Christ, has made a difference for over 2,000 years of the existence of man. It absolutely it continues to make a difference. Real quickly, the podcast, tell us how, who's on and how they can watch it. Uh, Steadfast and Loyal Podcast, Juliana Tamarazzi, please watch it. Talk about the persecution of Christians in the Middle East. Great subject. Colonel, thank you. Merry Christmas to you, sir, and all Merry your family. Christmas. Thank you. Our thanks to Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, and especially you. Thanks for joining us. As we close today, Handel's Messiah is one of my all-time favorites. With everything that's happening around you this holiday season, as you prepare to travel or welcome guests, maybe you're working this season or even spending this time alone, we want you to know that we're praying for you. And as all of God's children are uh, created in His image, He is our King and you are valuable and you are precious to him. So Lord, we thank you that you became flesh and dwelt among us. You have redeemed us from the curse and you are our savior. We thank you and we say hallelujah. So I will sign off today with this SDG, Sole Deo Gloria, to God alone, the glory. Merry Christmas.